Greetings again, students. Um, we'll be also looking at uh, level three materials, part two of timber, unit one. The reference book is PSN, level three. Mr. Ndwande will be presenting uh, this lesson. Last time, we said we're going to look at the type of distortion in some timber, types of knots. We're going to discuss the isotropic and anisotropic behavior of material. We're going to discuss the properties of timber. Last, it's equilibrium moisture content of timber. The type of distortions in some timber. We're going to discuss these ones as prescribed on your textbook. The first one will be whipping, which is caused by a result of growth, stress release. How, uh, what it looks like, it looks like this. So your timber will deform into this shape. Cupping, the inner part and outer part dry at different rates and it looks like that. Twisting. The timber sewn close to this and the timber, your timber will twist like that as shown in the picture. Diamonding, when the big board dry at different rates. So when you look at this timber, this is the original shape here. Then after diamonding, the shape will change to this. Spring timber, some close to piece, and it looks like that. Check ends of the board dry faster than the middle, and it looks like that, which means your timber will crack. And shakes, they happen due to pure poor dry practice, and they look like this. And the question is, what are knots? And students, you must be able to give a proper answer to this question. Simple answer will be, a knot is a place where the tree grew a branch that was later cut or knocked off. What does it look like before and after sewing? It looks like this. When you look at this, this is your log. When you cut this branch and you sew it to the timber shape, you will come up with something like this. And the effect of knots it is important. Students, the plane of weakness will be created along where the knot was. So, which means when your timber starts to break, it will break when a knot was. So, you must be aware when you're doing your roofing that you, you take a serious precaution when a knot is. Make sure that the knot doesn't go all the way to the other side. So, because it will create a weak plane. We're going to discuss isotropic and anisotropic. First, you must be able to define or recall from the level two materials that it was discussed that isotropic is a particular property that has the same value in any direction within the material. An isotropic material is a particular property that has a value that is related to the direction within the material. What does this mean? Isotropic and anisotropic. Let's stick to anisotropic because this is a property of timber. Isotropic, the example, it's steel. Anisotropic, it's timber. When you take your grains with anisotropic and you nail your timber or you screw your timber, you need to consider the directions of your grains. If your screw is parallel to your grains, it will be easy to pull out. 
but when it's perpendicular to your grains it will be difficult to pull out which means the resistance is high that's why we say timber it's anisotropic you need to look at the directions it does not give you the same value in all directions unlike steel properties of timber first property is strength the other one is density and stiffness you must be able to define these properties but the question will not be as simple as as it is discuss the properties of timber no it will say discuss the relationship between strength density and stiffness what they are looking for is simple definitions strength is how much stress it can withstand would stand without deforming plastically or breaking. Density, how much it weighs per cubic meter at 17% moisture content. Meaning, for your timber to give you a strength or to deform and go back to its original shape, that means it has a strength. It must have a certain moisture in it. Of which it, it's 17% stiffness it's defined as how much it resists bending when the load is applied to it and the difference between these guys strength density and stiffness for your timber to carry a heavy load it must have a certain moisture content but it mustn't be thick but for if your timber is, has lost that 17 percent moisture content then it means your timber must be thick, which means you need a property which is called stiffness because it will carry a load, but once it bends, it breaks. Last but not least, equilibrium moisture content. Relating to density, which means your timber needs to maintain an equilibrium moisture content. Once you lose your moisture content, which means you get your distortions, like your door, when your door, when it's raining, when it absorbs, absorbs water, it swells, which means it increases the moisture content, which means you need to maintain the moisture content. The moisture content of timber must be in equilibrium at all times. Equilibrium moisture content is the point at which the moisture content of the wood and the environment are in equilibrium. That brings us to the end of our first unit of timber. Thank you.